and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147, and this is tip and trick number 18. So during tip and trick number 17, I showed you my display book that I use to store smaller paintings. This is what I use to store my bigger paintings. So these I tend to use for my completed. I tend to find um, as you as you will have seen in the past um, for storing paintings that aren't yet completed I prefer to hang up the smaller ones and roll up the big ones I find that that works I find that I've got easier access to them you could use this for paintings that aren't yet completed as well but this is where I put any completed painting that won't fit in my display book so anything bigger than sort of 30 by 40 so I have a 40 by 40 um, because the book is not wide enough for that it is just short of 30 centimeters um, in the width I have a 50 by 50 I'm trying to think what else I have in here, but this is an A1 art folder. So I've turned it down, so it's upside down. It, I got one that was a little bit thicker than some that you can get, but basically it's a thick plastic. You can get leather bound ones and all sorts. I have, I have some in here that are 50 by 50, so the tree. This one's 40 by 40, face, oh that's another tree, because I did have some of these in a 50 by 50 frame in my front room. I have this 50 by 50, the very colourful African woman, I did that one ages ago. Um, I have my Christmas one, so this normally goes into my 50 by 50 frame at Christmas time. And then I trade it out for another one throughout the rest of the year. Um, and yeah, they're all stored flat in here. And of course, I've pulled out all the biggest ones. Um, but this is an A1 artist's folio. And this slides under my couch. So that's where I tend to keep my paintings that are big. It enables me to keep them flat. I did have it propped up at one point, sort of down the side of a couch or down the side of a cabinet. However, because of the weight of the diamonds, they did curl a little bit. Um, this one was actually in there when it did. So it's flattened out again since I put them flat instead. But I don't recommend having them upright because the weight of the diamonds and the fact that the canvas is flexible will cause them to sort of buckle down on themselves a little bit. I did look at getting, you know, maybe a leather posher A1 folio. And even though that they can be a little bit more rigid than this tough plastic, I don't think they'd be rigid enough to have it upright. So for me, this goes under my couch. It could go under a bed. You know, there are many, many items in the house that you could probably slip something thin underneath um, that is also big. It does depend, of course, on your home. But the couch works for me, and that's good because it means I don't have to go upstairs to put a painting away um, because it fits where it needs to. So this is my primary place for any big diamond paintings. Of course, I do still have some paintings that are even too big for that. Um, for those, I tend, and I'm trying to find where it is, I tend to put them um, back in the storage tube. Not always, but I try to. Um, I do have and I can't quite locate where I put the tube, um, but I do have a really long diamond painting from Ever Moment. Um, so I've stored those in the postal tube that it came in. But you can actually buy tubes. They're used by like planners and drafters. You can buy plastic tubes if you have 
a painting that is too long to go in one of these A1 storage or you can use the original box. So I do have a couple of Diamond Art Club ones for example that I finished that I just rolled around my famous, or not famous, my ever popular use of pipe lagging or pipe insulation as it's called in other countries. Um, you also get some, sometimes get a smaller version of this in a kit, but I wrap them round this so that the diamonds don't fold in on each other or squeeze down on each other. And then I pop this then inside a box or a tube to keep it protected. And that works for some of my much larger paintings that don't have a home at the moment but I don't want to get rid of them because you know you move you redecorate all of a sudden you find the perfect spot for that diamond painting that you love and had to do um, but didn't have anywhere to put it so um, yeah a piece of pipe lagging or say a piece of foam pool noodle just wrap it round with your diamonds facing outwards because if you face them inwards, they will squish against each other and potentially pop off. So that keeps it protected that way. If you took this out, for example, over time, the diamonds would weigh down and you would end up squashing the painting, which in turn could give you lines when you unroll it. So I always suggest any large paintings that you completed, roll around something and then pop in maybe a brown postal tube or you can get some tough plastic you know architects tubes that they'd normally put big plans in if you want to go a bit posher you could have some of those but i tend to use this a1 artist folio underneath my couch as the primary storage for any painting over 30 by 40 that needs a temporary home until it's found a permanent one. So I hope that helps you on storing your completed diamond paintings as well as the past tips and tricks on storing diamond paintings that you've not yet done. But thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.